Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again, spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people. Today I want to talk to you about the subject matter, <laughs> order out of chaos. For years now we've heard that there is a power that rests behind the curtain with an objective of having total control over the whole human population as well as the whole geographics of the earth. They want to control it. They want to control it because they feel they have the authority, they got the worth, that they are the chosen people, the special people, because they have gotten where they have gotten. And they are only there because that's where their destiny has brought them. And everybody else are in the position that they're in because of the same. And nevertheless, the people who are in these other positions are not necessarily satisfied. So they're constantly doing things to, you know, move on up or to make changes. And yet, we have ourselves situated in such a way that all kinds of chaos has been established, has always been established throughout time. And it is still that way. We've had many wars. We've killed many people in the name of peace, uh, not knowing that war is no way to have peace. Or even the threat of war is no way to have real peace. And yet, this is the situation we find ourselves in every day. We talk about uh, making America great again. This type of philosophy is the philosophy of every sovereign power. They are where they are because they are the best of that. And their principles, their culture, their systems uh, really points to what it should be. And if the world were, uh, was like that, then we'd have the peace, the prosperity, and joy that we all say we want. And yet, these people who are proclaiming these specialties don't even have them themselves, let alone spreading it to someone else. <coughs> And so what we have, as I have seen it, is a bunch of lies being perpetrated on the people, the masses of the people, by those who get galls and bowls enough to do it, to a group of people who are weak and unattentive uh, enough to recognize what's going on and have enough faith to stop it. <clears throat> and yet, when people say that anyone who think along many of these lines are entertaining conspiracies, the conspiracy theories they always call them, meaning that it's some phony stuff that came up out of somebody's mind. I remember many, many years ago doing some research and running across the New World Order and those people behind the curtain, and it had been predicted that in the year 2000 something strangely was going to happen, and that strange thing that happened really did, I mean that they predicted really did happen. That's when George Bush was able to become president of the United States in a crazy type of situation. And for those of who have followed it since then, the same thing happened with Donald Trump. And yet some of the old crazy things that's happening here with uh, Trump in relationship to the Russians about sanctions seems to be sort of similar to the same things that happened with Reagan and the Iranians over Jimmy Carter. Hold the hostages until we get through. Make Jimmy Carter look bad. I win. Uh, we get our hostages back, you get your little pay payola. And so, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm actually stating to you is order out of chaos. They are trying to, uh, the way it, all of the documentation, all of the evidence indicate that they want another third war. They want to start as much confusion as possible. Christianity against Islam and any other bodies who are going to get in there. They want to start talking about colors, races, and and, uh, and this type of agenda, everything. People talk about the guy in, in North Korea, how he would just kill a person in a, in a heartbeat. And people of our nature, nation would say that that's horrible and despicable and we should be all against that. And the truth of the matter is we're just so blinded that we don't even recognize that the President of the United States during these times would do exactly the same thing if those restraints weren't there against him. It is those restraints that prevents him. 
And really, he's no different than the guy over in North Korea. And we the people who are blind and not even aware of what really is going on. We're just as blind as the people in North Korea. And so while we might not have stooped to that level just yet, we do have a president who's trying to destroy everything that you have held important. The press, religion, assembly, speech, all these kinds of things. We want to destroy the at the FBI, bring down everything. Why? To be just like that. And see, now is the greatest opportunity that I can ever think of. This opportunity right now is better than the opportunities of the 50s and the 60s. Then they were talking about voters' rights. <clears throat> then they were talking about basic human rights for black people. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about basic human rights for every people, basic human rights for every nation, basic human rights. And it is a time when we can see that those human rights, unless we do the right thing, are just being torn away, torn away by those who have no respect for human rights and those of us who claim that we do when we don't. The hypocrisy is the evidence that supports the fact that we have the chaos of today. But rather than this chaos having uh, creating order out of this chaos, we have heard it to understand that we want to weak the nations, break, bring the nations down, where the nations are are uh, ready to receive outside support, outside direction, the same as the United States was ready to receive Donald Trump after having a George uh, Bush a Republican who was, was not of their liking, after having a uh, Barack Obama, yes we can man, oh they really hoped in Barack Obama, and he let him down, let him down because he couldn't do any more than the predecessor, especially when they jump into the same tune. And so they ended up trusting somebody like Trump. Now the powers behind the curtains are expecting the nations of the world to do the same thing, to be just as blinded. And they, who represent, who Trump truly is a representation thereof, are ready to step in. And you are so fearful of the terrorist acts that are grabbing you every time you assemble yourselves. See, you just want them. Whatever will work. And they say, they who created and played a major role in all of the problems that exist amongst the American people and the people of the world want to say they got the solution. And you have been dumbfounded so long till you believe exactly what they say. Now, when I say dumbfounded, I'm not trying to put you down. I'm saying this. The language you speak is because that's the language you were taught. The religion you hail a whole dear is the one that you have been taught. Your position in the social order of things is that which you have been taught. Any other way, it would have been the same. If you were taught that black was right and white was no way. If you were taught that, that's what you would believe and that's the way it is. So the ways of peace and prosperity and joy have never been taught in the societies of the world today, especially not here. But now, You've been hearing about it for quite some time. And now the screen of life is reflected around the world before us all to see what's going on. Now we can have order out of this chaos, but not the one that the guys and the ladies and the powers behind the curtain are trying to seduce us to, but our own. Our own. And I want to, you know, see if I can give you a one-on-one Quick education on some facts that you already can perceive, but you can't believe it because you weren't taught that. Listen, listen to this. The whole earth and everything that it is able to do, whether the resources are above the earth, on the earth, or in the earth, whether they are seen or unseen, they are the result of a power that we can't see, can't touch, can't feel. But the evidence is here. That's not us, ladies and gentlemen, regardless of our color regardless of our gender, regardless of our nationality. That's not us. That's a power outside of us. Now, but each of us, ladies and gentlemen, who we refer to as individuals or human beings, we mostly look alike to some degree, walk alike, talk alike, and all those other things that are coming amongst us, and we require the same thing for survival, same thing for survival, which are food, clothing, shelter, education, health care, these are absolutely essential. These are connected to everything in life that we recognize every day, that we utilize every day. These things are connected to every last one of us. 
And the thing that we need just as much as we need any of those is we need a job whereby there will never be a deficiency as long as there are the materials. There will never be a deficiency in any of these things that the people need, you and I need for survival because that's our mission. But to make this a special kind of thing, you don't just get a job, but you have a job of choice. The choice, my friends, my sisters, and my brothers, that gives you pleasure in doing what you do. As exciting as any sports athlete who loves what he's doing. As important as any lyricist who thrills at what they're doing. Or dancer, or painter, just love it. Or architect, or a teacher, love it. Wouldn't have it any other way. And there, my friends, will never be a shortage of this. So we as a human being, we as a population, our human race, would be able to experience peace because there's no there's justice. There's no need for war. We'll be able to experience prosperity because there's no need to lie, to cheat, to steal, to engage ourselves in those things that leads to terrorism and war. None of that. Enjoy in our lives because we're all satisfied with our lives and we're constantly growing constantly growing. Now, there will be, for those of you who might feel threatened because you're making good money right now, you're making good money right now, you are able to do a lot of things that people who are poor cannot do. This, my friends, will not take away anything from you. In fact, it will eliminate, if there is to be anything taken, the fear, the threat that you have that those who are at the bottom might, in order to get something, might have to cause you some extra losses. Though, my friends, the way of love, my friends, is this. When you are constantly receiving anything you want to meet your needs, your wants, and your desires, your dreams are being fulfilled in everyday life. This, my friends, is what I'm talking to you about. This is the order that can come out of this chaos that we're in today. If we, the people, accept it. What we're basically doing is expressing doing unto others as we would have others to do unto us. Doing that here within the United States of America as we get ready to go into this next uh, electoral process, getting some representatives. Letting them know we're changing our agenda. We're changing the mission of this nation. We're going to get the people, satisfy the people. We the people in the power of one people, one person. <laughs> One person, that's, I guess you can call a person if you want, but a spirit that's generating itself throughout all of us. Now, certain jobs won't be needed. There'll be many additional jobs as need, but jobs for them that has to do with money, whether it's taxes and fees and, and wages and this and that. No, we don't have any need for that. All of that stuff is gone. That was the part of the scam. That's part of the scam of the systems of the world. And our basic function here, as we start, is the fulfillment of the United States dream, whereby it can become a model to the rest of the world. Not that we're trying to force it on anybody. But what we're doing is respecting one another because this is the way it's going to be. We want to respect one another and others are not going to allow us to not respect them. No, that stuff is over. So as one grows, the whole nation grows. You won't be losing anything if you're rich. You've got a nice house right now. You've got nice cars and ways of transportation right now. You're not going to lose any of that. You're not going to have to worry about a mortgage payment. You're not going to have to worry about a car note. You're not going to have to worry about your electric bills. You're not going to have to worry about your, uh, any of that stuff like that. All you have to do, my friends, is enjoy life as you participate in life. Enjoy life as you participate in life. You don't have to worry about having a, a, car, a, a yard full of cars. That's in the way. You can go and get any car you want anytime you want it. You vacations. All that stuff has changed. This is about the dream world, my friend. That's in your hands. Now, when I tell you about that dream world, compare that to what we have today. 
fighting about this, fighting about that, arguing with Russia about this, arguing with the president about this, who's going to go to jail, that's all you're talking about, who tweeted this, who tweeted that. Now, when an, a an action is taken, say like somebody kills someone, and it comes over on the news, and the first thing most black people say, I would, uh, I, I, I believe, because I know I do, that act, I sure hope it was not committed by a black. Because if it is, it makes, it takes something from me. And I hope it takes something from all of us to see somebody who looks like us out there being so out of their control. That hurts. But that makes me think that every time a white person is caught in that same kind of way, that all of the white people would be thinking, I sure hope it's not white, because it makes us look the same way we feel. But wouldn't it be great when we can be upset if anything like that happened? We're not worried no, so much now whether it's black or white, but that it, it could happen. So our concern now is dealing with whatever could cause such things like this to happen. This is what we call it moving on up. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me get ready to close. I don't want to wear you down. Order out of chaos. I have just given you a picture of what you the people can do. It's not going to happen by your representatives that you have in office now because those representatives were chosen for a different agenda. It doesn't mean that they can't come through and do exactly what you want them to do. But you have to change your mind right now from what they have taught you to what you want <clears throat> and what you are going to teach them by what you are going to require of them. And that is that the agenda so clearly mentioned here is carried out to the hilt, that that's what they're going to do. And the control mechanisms that uh, we have, somebody over here owning, owning the oil here, you call it kind of nationalizing, so, so to speak, taking these individuals and these corporations and people, groups of people who have benefited at the expense of the loss that have gone to the multitudes of people, taking that back and putting it back in the hands of the people. The people are saying, this is ours according to reality. And we love it. And thank God for all of us. And we're going to make sure that all of us enjoy this life while we are here. We're not going to even worry about the next life. We're just going to enjoy this one by creating it, making it beautiful, leaving you alone as long as what you're doing does not infringe upon the peace and the comfort of someone else. I usually say God wants that. But some people don't believe in God. So to them, I'd have to say, I want that. Now, God would not be ashamed of wanting that. I am not ashamed of wanting that. Because I don't care who you are, princes, kings, pharaoh, president, you are no more important than the guys who are walking down the street who are wondering where they're going, swinging their arms, hoping that there is a God somewhere. So, you in good hands. The person that We've looked down at all our lives because of the way we were taught. The love of that spirit in our body. And we see that person as genuine as we see ourselves. And the princes and the, queen and the queens and all those people, we've idolized them for history. And not now that we're going to dis uh, honor ring them as we have in the past. Only this time, we're on one another, ourselves as well, as do they. I think that's pretty good. And I'm glad to be able to stand before you and say today, I don't care where you go on the internet, Facebook, I hope you get a chance to hear this. Because to me, this is Michelangelo. Ha, ha, ha.